And now, Art Torres. To understand what is happening, let's be clear about this. Whether it's Cuba that still doesn't have human rights protections for its people, whether it's China, which is even worse than Cuba in terms of wages and workers and pollution and human rights violations. And let's be clear about the aggression that's going on in Tibet. It's not about just a small country. It's about principles and values. And if we're going to deal with principles and values as a democratic party, then we ought to be against human rights wherever, uh, against human rights violations wherever they exist. Yeah. Wherever they exist, whether it's in Tulare or Tibet. Democrats stand for something. And those are the values that we need to continue to stand on. My friend uh, Tom Harkin from Iowa, who's been in there for many, many years, said just recently, the Iraqi government has billions of dollars sitting in bank accounts, true, collecting interest, while American taxpayers are being forced to foot the bill. <clears throat> I believe that information is power. And I want to give you some information right now. It will be on our website. As of today, 4,023 young men and women have lost their lives in Iraq. Wounded, 29,628. Iraqi civilian deaths, 151,000. Excess direct, Iraqi deaths across the board, 655,000 people. The, Viet, the Vietnam War has now been outpaced, a 12-year war, outpaced by the Iraqi war. $435 million you and I are paying a day to be in Iraq. Three billion a week. Twelve billion a month. That's what we're paying for this war. Five hundred and twenty-six billion is the cost of operations to date. One point two trillion to one point seven trillion in Afghanistan and Iraq combat costs. This is the most troubling for me which is why that plaque is so important for us to reflect upon. And to send us to reflect upon those that are still alive, but in what condition coming home. 590 billion is the estimated future cost to deal with the disabilities of our veterans coming home. 590 billion for this war. The interest of that cost, which is also important for us to understand, is 615 million. That's the interest on the money that we borrowed. By the end of the day, this war will cost us over three trillion dollars. That's why it's so important for these young people to be involved, because they're gonna end up paying for this tragic decision. And when I saw on 60 Minutes, the professor who provided the slanted and misguided data to this White House, to urge them on into this war, and for him to lackadaisically say that there were certain mistakes made. No kidding. No kidding. So when I see the New York Times today, and Senator John McCain putting forward his foreign policy team, they are all neocons out of the Bush administration. Starting with that fat Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger. <laughs> and moving down the line to the neocons who are part of McCain's brain trust. We need to be very worried about what that means. And that's why I think we need to start the campaign today about who John McCain is. Go to our website, cadem.org, C-A-D-E-M.org, so you'll get this. But I want to give you some snippets on the prospect of Bush and the war, he wants to stay 100 years. I don't care whether he says it's going to be like Korea or somewhere else. We're still going to lose lives for years if that commitment maintains itself. He voted against mandatory minimum rest periods for, the, for people to go back to the Iraq and Afghanistan. He has voted with Bush 89%. Just remember that if you remember anything. 89% of his votes were cast to support George W. Bush. He supports Bush's Social Security privatization plan. I don't know about you, but I'm chronologically gifted. I'll be retiring pretty soon, and I want those Social Security benefits. I pay for it, and all the other young people that are paying into it keep on working. I don't want it privatized. I don't want it subjected to the hedge funds and the Wall Street crooks. Let's not forget 
forget that in 1991, he almost was booted out of the United States Senate for the deal he made with the Keating Five and the savings and loan scam. Sound familiar to the mortgage crisis today and what kind of result all of a sudden today he comes up with a resolution which I don't find particularly appealing. And yet in 1991, he was censured by the United States Senate for his participation in the savings and loan scandal. And he came, claims to oppose special interest groups. I don't care how many affairs he's had with whatever lobbyist. I just care about what favors did you do for that lobbyist? How were we affected by your decisions in cahoots with that lobbyist on private chartered airplanes, as you finally admitted to, Mr. McCain? But most of his senior campaign staff are former lobbyists. What did our parents always tell you? I always judge you by the friends you keep. Well, he's kept them a long time. We believe in, in, in the right to bear arms, there's no question, especially for sports men and women here in the Valley, it's an important issue. But we don't believe in assault weapons, yet he opposes a ban on assault weapons. McCain, he opposes a ban on high capacity magazines. What I find troubling, especially for law enforcement that we need to have out there protecting us, he have, has opposed the ban of any type of ammunition, including armor piercing. Yes, that's McCain. I don't care if you have a bulletproof vest, those bullets can get through if they're armor piercing, and yet he opposes banning them. He believes abortion should be legal only when the pregnancy resulted from incest rape or when the life of a woman is in danger. He wants to overturn Roe versus Wade. Now we can differ on the issue of abortion, but just to limit it, if someone is raped or incest, I think that's something that I would not agree with. The issue of economics is something that I've never really understood as well as I should. That's John McCain <laughs> talking to you and to America. He voted against a minimum wage increase. He voted against protections for workers' overtime rights, UAW. He opposed extending federal unemployment if you're out of work. That's John McCain. Even Republicans who are out of work want to get that.